It's time for My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Jello, everybody. Yes, it's the new Gay Family series, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning. Brought to you by the Jell-O family of desserts. J-E-L-L-O The big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tapioca puddings. Yes, sir. And now Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers this morning, the members of the household are in various stages of preparing for the new day. George is in the shower singing Old Man River. Katie the maid is getting breakfast, and Liz Cooper is just coming into the kitchen. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Mrs. Cooper. Has Mr. Cooper finished his shower yet? I don't think so. He's through toting the barge and lifting the bail, and he was getting a little drunk, so I guess he's just about landing in jail now. (laughs) Oh, I hope he's in a good mood when he comes down. I have something terrible to tell George, something that will just break his heart. Mrs. Cooper, you're not getting a divorce. Oh, much worse than that. My mother is coming to visit us. (laughs) Yes. And never mind the syrup on George's hotcakes. I'm going to be so sweet and sticky, he won't need it. Uh Uh-oh, I hear him coming. I'll be in the breakfast room. All right. Katie, where's Mrs. Cooper? She's in the breakfast room waiting for you. Oh, I'm afraid to go in there. I've got to tell Liz my mother's coming to visit us. (laughs) Oh, now, don't be like that, Katie. You can be thankful it's my mother and not uh, her mother that's coming. Yes, sir. Well, might as well go in and see how nice I can be to her. I wish I'd known about this earlier. I could have sold tickets. <laughs> the breakfast will be ready in a few minutes. Oh, man, da da da. Well, good morning, Liz, honey. Why, if it isn't my big, wonderful, handsome husband. Kiss me, George, darling, sweetheart, baby. All right. How do you feel? <laughs> my little honey baby doll, cream puff sugar. Wait a minute, who's putting it on for who here? <laughs> well, Liz, I, uh, I, I have something to tell you. That's funny, I have something to tell you, too. Well, uh, you tell me first, darling. All right. Uh, I I don't know how to put this, George, but... Well, I'm expecting a visitor. Pretty soon you're going to have another mouth to feed. Liz, honey, that's wonderful! (laughs) Oh, sit down. You you have to take care of yourself now. How soon? Well, she'll arrive the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow? Yes, on the super chief. (laughs) Liz, this is nothing to joke about. Imagine the patter of little feet around the house. George, we're going to have the patter of big feet around the house. My mother is coming to visit us. Your mother? I thought you were talking about a bundle from heaven. Boy, did I have the wrong location. (laughs) That is very humorous. What was your news? Well, Liz, I, I don't know how to tell you, but I'm expecting a visitor, and you're going to have another mouth to feed. Well, at least I can't misunderstand you the way you misunderstood me. George, you don't mean... Yes, Liz. My mother is coming to visit us. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Well, George, there's only one thing to do. You have to tell your mother not to come. I will not. You tell your mother not to come. After all, your mother visits us twice as often as my mother. Well, it comes out even. Your mother's twice as repulsive as my mother. Twice? Well, there isn't that much repulse in the world. Oh, no. Now, don't cry, Liz. Oh, please, Liz. Now, now, let's be sensible. Come on, calm down. Now, now, what can we do about our mother's coming? Well, we could put up sandbags and shoot it out with them. Now, I'll make a deal with you. We'll send them each a telegram and tell them not to come. Oh, what can we tell them? Oh, I know. How about this? Dear Mother, don't come now. House being closed while we fumigate for termites. Liz, you're a genius. Send that to both okay. of 
Western Union, two telegrams. Oh, thank you. George, here are the telegrams from our little mamas. What do they say? Oh, this one's from my mother. Uh, understand, and we'll come later. Why do you have to fumigate? Just let George smoke one of his pipes. Ha ha. <laughs> Your mother has a great sense of humor. Hmm. Hmm. And look at the way she addressed it. Miss Liz Elliott. Yeah. <laughs> You're married ten years and she still calls you by your maiden name. Mother's a hard loser. <laughs> Miss Liz Elliott. Well, I don't know what you've got to get mad about. Look at the way your mother addressed her telegram. George Cooper and what's her name? <laughs> see what she says. Sorry, am coming anyway. Wait and fumigate house after I leave. Well, she's right. It... <laughs> You'll need it more than... Liz. What? There's more. Oh. Please remove all flowers from house as I have a terrible allergy. Oh, dear. And I just bought flowers today. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, honey, you'll have to admit I tried to keep her from coming here, but... Well, as long as she insists, I want you to promise me you'll be nice to her. I'll treat her just the way she treats me. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> oh, all right, George. I'll try to be nice to her. George, take your feet off the sofa. Oops, sorry. You know everything has to be perfect when your mother gets here, or I'll get a series of lectures on how to keep house. Yeah. You know, she should be here by now. Maybe the train was late. With your mother on board, it wouldn't dare. <laughs> uh-huh. I think I detect her gentle touch on the doorbell. I'll get it. Mother! George, my baby! <laughs> How are you, dear? Fine, Mother. Come in. Oh, and well, it's wonderful to see you again, my little baby. <laughs> Hello, Mother Cooper. George, let me look at you. <laughs> my little baby boy. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Mother Cooper. Oh, George, I had the most ghastly trip. It was unbearable. The train just crawled along, baby. It really did. Oh, what a shame. Hello, Mother Cooper. Well, it's good to be here anyway. <laughs> oh, I've looked forward to being with my little baby. <laughs> well, I've looked forward to being with you too, Mother. Well, Elizabeth, I came all this way to see you. The least you could do is say hello. <laughs> Well, Liz, Mother's speaking to you. Why don't you answer her? I don't trust myself. <laughs> Liz, Mother hasn't been here ten minutes. George, you... George, please. I'll keep things peaceful no matter what the sacrifice. <laughs> well, my dear, have you been taking good care of my little baby? Yes, I have. I give him a bottle every three hours and change him every time he cries. <laughs> Liz. I'm sorry, Mother Cooper. Yes, we've both been fine. Thank you. Good. Now, children, I've brought you each a little gift. See, Liz? She brought one for each of us. Uh, here's yours, George. <laughs> Open it. All right. Why, Mother, it's beautiful. Look, Liz, a solid gold cigarette case with my name engraved on it. It's lovely. And here's something for you, Liz. Well, thank you, but you didn't have to bring me any. What is it, Liz? Look, George, just what I've always wanted, a bottle of Airwick. <laughs> well, my dear, George gives you so many luxuries, I thought you'd appreciate something practical. I use it myself. Oh, really? What do you do, put a little behind each ear? <laughs> Liz. <laughs> There she goes again, Mother, making jokes. <laughs> oh, never mind, George. I know Elizabeth resents me. I know exactly what she's thinking. Oh, no, you don't. I'm thinking some words you never even heard of. <laughs> Elizabeth, believe me, I don't want to cause friction in your little home. I'm trying to think of you. <laughs> For instance, I can't eat everything, but there's no reason why you should go to the trouble of cooking special meals for me. That's right. So we'll all go on my diet. What? <laughs> what is your diet, Mother? Uh, raw vegetables and goat's milk. Of all the nervy things I've ever... Liz, 
Can't you see she's only thinking of us? Us? Yes, she doesn't want to make extra work. My dear, it's a wonderful diet, and it'll do you both good. George, you could stand to lose a few pounds, and Elizabeth could certainly stand to lose a few inches around the... Hold uh... it! (laughs) Mother Cooper, you're welcome here as a guest. But I put my foot down when you start running my home. There will be no goat's milk in this house, and that's final. Why, of course, dear. I wouldn't dream of forcing my desires on you. Well, that's better. More goat's milk, George. No, thanks, Mother. I I don't really care for it very much. Well, you've only been drinking it a week. It's a taste that grows on you. (laughs) I'll bet Elizabeth likes it, don't you, dear? What did you say? (laughs) That's just what I might have expected. Now, I think we'd better cut it out, Mother. Today at the bank, Mr. Atterbury leaned over the drinking faucet, and I found myself wanting to butt him. (laughs) George, Mother knows best. Mother knows best. This is a point I'd like explained. Why does Mother always know best? I got a mother, too. She hates goat's milk. It's just a figure of speech, Elizabeth. As one grows older, one grows wiser. Oh, well, then I better drink it, because you must be the wisest woman in the world. (laughs) Well, are you going to sit there and let her call your mother a broken-down old hag? That's not what she said. It's what she was thinking. It was not. It was, too. It was not. George, mother knows best. (laughs) See? This is the thanks I get for devoting my life to my children. I could have married again when your poor father died, but no. Oh, Liz, why did you have to imply she was so old? Tell her you're sorry. All right, Mother Cooper, I'm sorry you're so old. Don't... Cooper, I quit. I don't have to put up with this. Why, Katie, what's happened? Mr. Cooper's mother was sneezing and wheezing around all morning, and finally she broke into my room and bawled me out because she found some roses there. Well, Katie, you knew she was allergic to roses. Four roses? (laughs) Just four measly little roses the mailman gave me. Well, don't worry, Katie. It works right in with my plan to make her leave. I went out and picked all the plants she's allergic to, mostly ragweed, and I hid it all over the house, under the pillows, on the sofa, between the sheets, on her bed, every place. Ain't I a stinker? Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, she sneezed so much, George took her to see Dr. Boswell, and I'm sure he'll tell her she better go home. I'm so nervous waiting for her to come back. I'm all tingly and itchy. It's funny what your nerves can do to you, isn't it? Oh, here comes Sneezy now. <laughs> oh, where is everyone? In the living room, Mother. Oh, hello, Elizabeth, dear. How do you feel? Awful? No. Dr. Boswell sent me to a wonderful specialist, Dr. Stevenson. Oh, is he divine. <laughs> and I think he likes me. Well, uh, what about your allergy? He can cure it. If I stay here and take a shot every day, I'll be well in six weeks. Six weeks? That's all. Isn't that wonderful news? Six weeks? Well, I'll go in and get dressed. (laughs) Dr. Stevenson is taking me out tonight. Six weeks? (laughs) Oh, Katie, I guess I better take this ragweed out from under the pillow. Oh, uh, Mrs. Cooper, uh, do you still tingle and itch? Yes, why? That's not ragweed, it's poison ivy. Ow! Mother Cooper's visit is stretching on and on, and Mother has become a social butterfly. She's going out every night with Dr. Stevenson, and Liz and George are beginning to wonder when the butterfly is going back to her cocoon. 
Where's she going tonight, Liz? I don't know. Whenever I ask her where she's going or where she's been, all she does is giggle. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised. I thought Mother was past the stage of acting silly over a man. George, your mother is just old, not dead. <laughs> oh, sweet mystery of life, at last I found you. Oh, oh, good evening, children. Well, Mother, going out again? That's right, dear. Where are you going tonight? <laughs> that old place again? Mother, when are we going to get a chance to meet this fellow? Yes, I'd like to see what he looks like. Well, uh... Oh, one of these days I want you both to meet him. But, uh... But what? Well, uh, you see, Dr. Stevenson travels with socially prominent people. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mother. You're not ashamed of Liz and me, are you? Oh, no, dear boy, I'm not ashamed of you. But... Well, who are you ashamed of? <laughs> Shake hands with Liz Cooper, girl outcast. <laughs> Oh, Liz, you're just being sensitive. Mother doesn't mean you, do you, Mother? Yes. <laughs> George, I haven't told you this before, but it has to come out in self-defense. Now, I don't want to brag, but when it comes to royal blood, brother, my family is loaded. <laughs> really? What royalty do you have in your blood? Lord Calvert. <laughs> You can see, George, why I refused when Dr. Stevenson asked us all to come to dinner tomorrow night. If she acted like this at his house, I'd be so... Oh, more... well, don't worry. I wouldn't go now. Now, was... quiet, both of you. Now, listen to me. We're going to the doctor's tomorrow night. But, son... But George... We're going, and I don't want to hear another word about it. You understand? Yes, son. Yes, oh, George. Oh, women. Oh, oh. <laughs> Elizabeth, may I see you a moment? What is it, Mother Cooper? Uh, about dinner tonight. I uh, want to run over a few things with you. Such as what? Well, um, this means a good deal to me, and I, uh, I want to be sure you'll conduct yourself properly. Well, don't worry. I know which knife to eat my peas with. <laughs> now, Elizabeth, I simply want to review what will happen. All right, go ahead. Now... When we arrive, the butler will take your coat and I will introduce you to Dr. Stevenson. I want you to politely shake his hand. Well, I'm glad you told me that. I was thinking of biting him on the leg. <laughs> I'm only trying to help you. You can always learn from a more experienced person. And I have a tremendous background. Well, stay on that diet and it'll go away. <laughs> oh, I just know you're going to ruin everything. Well, put your mind at ease. I wouldn't go now if my life depended on it. Liz, I'm asking you for the last time. Please come to the dinner with us. No. But I think we should both meet this man. Mother is serious about him, Liz. She may even marry him. <gasps> oh, no. Do you think so, George? I just changed my mind. I'll be right down. Now, don't go without me. That's better. I'll wait downstairs with Mother. Katie, come here. Help me get dressed. I'm going. I'm coming, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, well, why did you change your mind so suddenly? I have to break up a romance. Do you realize if Mother Cooper marries that doctor, she'll live right here in town all the time? <gasps> well, that's how I feel, too. <laughs> what can you do? Katie, I'm afraid I'm not going to be a lady tonight. I'm going to do everything Mother Cooper is afraid I might do and more. No. Yes. Yeah. That ought to discourage the doc. And I'll load myself with perfume. Hand me some, will you, Katie? Hey, which one? Um, Schlemiel number five, hey. Now, please, Elizabeth, try to be... Don't worry, Mother. Everything will be all right. Well, Letitia, come in, come in. I let the butler take the evening off so we could have a cozy little uh, family group. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I'd like you to meet my little family, Griswold. <laughs> this is 
my son, George. How do you do? How do you do? And this is my dear little daughter-in-law, Elizabeth. How do you do? I'm certainly pleased to meet you. Likewise, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) Won't you come in? Say, this sure is a classy hangout you got here, Sawbones. A real first-class joint. (laughs) (laughs) There she goes, being droll. (laughs) All the time, those little jokes. Though she's really quite a darling when you get to know her. Ah, cut the gaff, Grandma. (laughs) When do we put on the feed bag, huh? Oh. Liz, I'd like to speak to you in the hall. Wait a minute, Buster. Say, uh, Doc, as long as we're here, would you please take a look at my throat? Uh... Liz, whatever you're doing, cut it out. Um, perhaps it uh, would be better if we went in and ate. Yes. Uh, h- help me, George. Uh, yes, and Mrs. Cooper, would you take my arm for dinner? Sure, but I'd rather have a steak. <laughs> Ain't it, Doc? Hey, where will I sit? Right here? Oh, no, no. Don't sit next to the doctor. Uh, I'll sit on your right hand, and George will sit on your left hand. Well, how will I eat? Out of a nose bag? <laughs> ah, I did it again, eh, Sawbones? Uh... Well, Griswold... <laughs> Uh, Let's talk about you and your busy life. (laughs) What's new? Liz, stop wiping the silverware on your skirt. Oh, it's all right. My dress needs cleaning anyway. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) Hey, what's all that stuff that dame is passing around? Uh, The maid is serving lamb. Well, what's the matter with it? It's turning green already. (laughs) That's mint jelly. What's it for? The lamb. What? Take it on the land. I know what the joint's been rated. <laughs> oh, I've never been so humiliated. Well, you certainly succeeded in making a fool of me. Oh, now, Letitia. <laughs> Don't worry, Griswold. We're leaving. I'm sorry we ruined your evening. Nonsense. I love it. I think Liz is wonderful. What? She's obviously just having fun. With a phony Bronx accent like that. (laughs) Phony? What do you mean? Look, my dear, I have to keep up a big front to get society patience. But it's not too long ago since I came from Brooklyn myself. No kidding, hey! Sure, I'm from Flatbush already. (laughs) Oh, you don't know how relieved I am that this is the kind of family I'm marrying into. Oh, oh, no. No, wait a minute, Doc. I I wasn't kidding. I'm awful. Wait till you get to know me. I'm a real slob. Uh, (laughs) Oh. It's no use, Mrs. Cooper. I like you. Oh. George, wake up. Huh? What is it? I was just thinking how peaceful it is with your mother gone. Now, Liz... I guess it is worthwhile to wake up and realize we're alone again. (laughs) Your mother's so funny. As soon as she found out the doctor was from Brooklyn and liked me, she couldn't stand him, thank goodness. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, wait a minute. George, the doorbell. Who could it be at this hour of the night? Hmm. I'll go down and see. I hope nothing's wrong. Never mind. Katie's answering it. Mrs. Cooper? Yes, Katie? Who's at the door? At your new house guest. Katie, you don't mean... Yes, Mrs. Cooper. Your mother just arrived. Oh. You have been listening to My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Danning, and based on characters created by Isabel Scott Rorick. 
Tonight's program was produced and directed by Jess Oppenheimer, who wrote the script with Madeline Pugh and Bob Carroll, Jr. Original music was composed by Marlon Skiles and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The part of Katie the Maid was played by Ruth Parrott. Lucille Ball will soon be seen in the Paramount picture Sorrowful Jones. Be sure to listen to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband next week. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.